this is uh, five. No, because it's a, a male, so I'm just tracking where he's been within the water. You ready for the next one? Oh, there she is. 106. We're going to be on a 106, which is which is after the 095s, but before the 108s. All right, and then it's 578, mm -hmm. and then 311. The way we check for eggs is where their leg goes into their body, right in there is where the eggs are. So definitely, uh, definitely can feel them right in there. They feel like uh, little ping pong balls underneath the surface there. I can write right in the scale. That it's 515 and it's trap number five that I got her out of. Because I definitely want to know that when I let her go, I want to put her back in this same spot. She, If this is her nesting grounds around here and she's figured it out, no sense in putting her a mile that way. We marked her as 512, the date we caught her, and then 5, the trap that we caught her in. So she's gonna go back in this box, trap 5, but I'm gonna put a tag inside of her so that the next time, next year, I'm, I'm gonna catch her again, I'm sure of it, and she'll have this number, and then we'll know how many eggs that she laid this year. We'll be keeping a record of how many times she donates eggs over her lifetime. We can get a feel for if we let a mama turtle go, does she stay in the same location or does she move up or down uh, the river? The males, we track the males, we don't bring the males back into the lab, but we use the same tags in the males and we keep track of where they're moving up and down the river. This is our incubator and the incubator will hold uh, 17 of our boxes for the eggs. Keeping the eggs at 31 degrees Celsius is going to ensure that we get uh, females. Then once we collect eggs, then the goal is to get to baby turtles. What we're looking for is after a year, this is how big baby turtles are. And when these eggs hatch, uh, we'll have about 400 eggs, we'll have about 350, 375 hatchlings. The hatch rate somewhere right around 85%. And what we'll do with those uh, babies is they'll get a tag inside of them. So nobody has done uh, the tagging of these brand new hatchlings. And so we've come up with a method in order to do that. The, the field wants to use these tags to mark the animals. The alternate to marking these animals is in some way clipping off their toes to give a numbering system. And these will be one-year-old turtles released, and then I'll have the brand new babies released, and we'll look at uh, how they survive, survivability, over the course of the next four or five years. Uh, but the ones that get the head start, they think food falls from the sky, so you know, are they going to be able to cope with the real environment? And then the brand new ones who have all of their native instincts right intact, and I let them go immediately, they tend to be fish food, bird food, so who's going to survive better, the ones that are small? and vulnerable or the ones that are large and maybe not so bright, but is large gonna help them out? How do you, you guys know how to tell the difference between uh, female yeah, and male turtles? For, for the box turtles, it's the eyes. Brown eyes give you a girl, Red eyes give you a boy for the box turtles. For these guys, it's all about fingernails. Really, really long fingernails means it's a boy. What? 
Yeah, they used the really long fingernails in mating so that they could catch the females. We work with turtles, and the reason that she's working with me this summer is we get eggs out of turtles. So these right here are turtle eggs. These are eggs from a snapping turtle. This flask is what they say the shape of the nest is like because they dig it out with their back legs. They put their leg down and out to the side and they scoop down and out to the side and they scoop. So if they're sitting still and they go down and out to the side, that's the shape that you're going to get. I thought the answer was yes, but. That guy's probably about 42 years old. They're an opportunistic feeder. They'll look for an opportunity to find something that has died. They'll eat it and they'll get a great meal out of it. And that's what they do. Yes. So what do you give us? What do you give him to eat? What do I give him to eat? He gets chicken right now. Chicken? Yeah, that's how I caught him. Research that Shazi has been assisting me with is more along the lines of a Head Start program and it's for a freshwater turtle that we're using as a model and then we could expand that into sea turtles. One of the great things about the research we do here is it's directly applicable to a project that's going on on the Belize soil. They have a great beach for hawksbill sea turtles. It's great having students that are enjoying what they're doing. This summer, I'm going to be taking marine and tropical biology, and we're going to Belize. These turtles are tiny when they're hatched, and their mom may have gone over all kinds of debris to get to lay the nest. But when those hatchlings come out, they might end up in a, a bottle, a bleach bottle that's cut up or something like that, and not make it back to the beach. So if we clear out the area in front of each one of those nests, then we're going to make it easier for those turtles to get back into the water. I learned to swim just for this course. Smile for the camera.